so this is arvin i am going to present you on the electric vehicle drive train system for today so this following is the list of contents which we will be getting familiarized with out of this today's discussion so uh, first let's start with the brief history of automotive powertrain followed by the powertrain classifications and uh, the overall schematic of hybrid electric battery electric powertrains and in terms of technical aspect of like what is the advantage that basically we are getting through the electric vehicle when it comes to comparative conventional vehicles that we will have a brief introduction on that and then uh, overall architecture of electric vehicle what are all the major components comes into it and drive system how the power flows and then with the subsystem components functions with the queries so i'll uh, go to the uh, start of this presentation which is the automotive powertrain history so this electric vehicle what we are uh, talking all these days it's not something new which has been evolved uh, years in 1860 after the invention of the magnetics induction uh, machines so this electric vehicle was a pretty old one but what happened over a period of time uh, the gasoline cars and the diesel engines came into the market which actually dominated for a, quite a couple of uh, good uh, years and post that now uh, we are going back and uh, innovating some of the technology barriers which we have faced during the initial days and that's how now the electric vehicle is evolving this is just overall history for just for your uh, understanding this why why i put this is because it's not something new which has been uh, there for a long many years now the broad classification of the automotive power train so i put it in a very simpler way wherein like first is a conventional which is the conventional engine as such gasoline or diesel engine so conventional engine works with uh, fuel liquid fuel and then uh, the power from the engine which goes to the transmission that's been transferred to the wheels so this is the conventional engine power train works wherein hybrid is a type of power train wherein partly is being with a motor which is called as an electrical machine and partly with an engine so the mix up of this system which delivers the power to the transmission to the wheels calls it an hybrid and probably down the line we will see in detail types of hybrid power trains etc now uh, the third one is the battery electric vehicle which is also called as bev where it's a pure electric which runs in the motor type uh, electric machine which trans, uh, produces the power transfers the power and the torque to the wheels through the transmission here is the schematic of the electric vehicle so the overall schematic of battery electric vehicle wherein the power the ba battery is the place where we stores the electrical power which then transfers from the battery to the motor which generates the torque and the power and that's been transferred to the transmission and then to the wheels through the drive shaft so this is a complete battery electric vehicle schematic now so there are lot of mix up of hybrid power train which involved a uh, lot of configurations with conventional engine as well as with the electrical engine so one type is that the mild hybrid power train so what is that mild hybrid power train is like so if suppose vehicle is been powered by a conventional engine and uh, most of the energy that's being spent by the engine is when you drive in a traffic city driving condition wherein during the idling speed where uh, the energy is being lost so that instead of losing the energy from that aspect so the motor or a generator uh, motor which actually helps the engine to uh, deliver the power during that particular time and that has been powered by the battery pack so uh, here uh, this is how the mild hybrid power train works and for an example of this mild hybrid power train right now if you see the real example is like maruti suzuki has an cs and s cross which has the mild hybrid now going for the serious hybrid so serious hybrid is like the power flow goes like this so liquid fuel from there powered by the engine and then goes to the battery pack so battery is getting power from the engine as because normally battery needs to be powered either from the engine which converts the power to the electrical 
energy and then it's being stored in the battery pack and from for the motor the power is being supplied from the battery and from the motor it drives the transmission to the wheels so this is a type of serious hybrid powertrain which you are seeing it here so next is the parallel hybrid powertrain so here the parallel hybrid is one is the liquid fuel which uh, transfers the power to the engine and then the engine delivers the power to the wheels so this is one side uh, the other side if you see the motor the battery powers the motor and motor generates the mechanical energy power and that's been delivered to the transmission which drives the wheels so this is one type of uh, electrical energy these two being coupled in parallel which we call it as a parallel hybrid power so this is a combination of series and parallel hybrid powertrains as per the vehicle demand the parallel hybrid uh, powertrain works so as shown in the figure the system of the motor is a generator that sometimes includes gear up device couples allows the engine to recharge the battery so this has an advantage of it we have a simple example of such kind of power train such as toyota pyrus where you can see this kind of power train so this is a plug-in hybrid vehicle plug-in hybrid mostly this is not being considered for right now on roads like phvs are available in market today the number of companies have begun sell these kind of service kits like already a conventional powertrain is there so remove that and put a battery pack and then put a motor and delivers the power to the motor from the battery pack to the wheel so this is one type of powertrain so this is from the aftermarket people are using it going back to see why are we going for an electric vehicle when it comes to comparative to a conventional engine so yes there is an aspect of environmental where uh, we uh, electric vehicle is environmental friendly whereas the uh, conventional vehicles provides uh, produce the this thing gas which is an environmental this thing so now when it comes to the electric i'm not touching much much on the environmental aspect of electric vehicle because that's uh, still a debate will everyone is uh, discussing on that now i'm going to touch what are all the advantages of electric vehicle in terms of efficiency of the powertrain uh, and why we say that future is a electric powertrain so now if you see this is the conventional urban drive cycle for a, a conventional engine so let's say 100% is the capacity or the efficiency of the fuel and uh, that's being supplied to the engine let's say either the petrol or the diesel engine and even with a lot of lot of lot of fine tunings that's been happening in the engine technology but then the losses we cannot improve the efficiency of the engine more than a 30 to 40 percentage so this is just an example where you can see there is a 76 percentage of losses in the engine and this is during the driving condition and uh, this is the eight percent of the efficiency that's being lost in the engine when it's being used in the normal uh, city driving condition where it's a standstill means like the engine idling condition so finally after these two losses the efficiency is coming to the driveline is around 16 percentage and from the driveline there are some driveline losses like drive shaft which has the bearings and bearings are coupled to the wheels through the splines so because of those mechanical frictions and losses that which roughly around three percentage and finally the 13 percentage is what is being delivered to the wheels so this is the overall conventional engine flow and this is something which we cannot eliminate as such which is the aero drag and rolling drag this aero drag is something which uh, morely depends on the styling of the vehicle aerodynamics and rolling drag is mainly depends on the frictional force between the tire and the road that's one one of the part and braking yes there are some in, something which we can discuss on this braking when we talk about the eve now so this is the highway driving cycle again this is a flow for a conventional vehicle wherein this engine losses 76 77 still remains whereas since it's an highway where the vehicle is operating at a continuous speed so there is no standby loss losses so that's let consider as zero so when it comes to the 23 percentage as the engine efficiency and then driveline losses uh four percentage so even in that scenario only 19 percentage is what is being transferred to the wheels how the electric vehicle is being improved in this aspect let's go through it so now uh, this is couple of hybrids where the efficiency improvement is possible by you going for this hybrid now so 
I told something about a micro hybrid hybrid in a couple of slides before, wherein this micro hybrid eliminates this standby. So uh, I gave an example of Maruti Suzuki, Sias, and S cross. So that eliminates this eight percentage losses. And for the some of the hybrids, wherein engine efficiency can be improved, and in this mild hybrids, there is an efficiency improvement in this area. So where the braking percentage, six percentage losses, means like the thermal losses that's been dissipated into heat, wherein in electric vehicle, there is, there is an option wherein we can convert the energy of the therm thermal energy or thermal losses back to the electrical energy and we can store it into the battery. So this is a beauty of the electric motor which acts as a generator. Now, this is the final electric vehicle efficiency map as such. Now you can see a uh, battery instead of fuel tank. So we uh, this electric motor has been powered uh, through the batteries. And let's consider 100% is the input power. And for the motor, normally we can design or we can have a motor in this uh, having a 90 percentage of efficiency and losses would be around only 10 percentage as when you compare to the conventional engine the efficiency is around 30 to 40 and losses will be around 60 to 70. So this is a major advantage of going for an electric vehicle means electric powertrain and next is the driveline losses. Yes of course there are some driveline losses which needs to be considered and why this 14 percentage is because uh, the lot of mechanical aspect of things which is being added into the conventional engine whereas when it comes to motor some of the things like the drive shaft intermediate shaft and the bearings and the transmission also included so that's where the driveline losses are pretty high here and finally we are having an efficiency of 76 percentage which is really worth comparing to a uh, efficiency of 13 19 percentage of a conventional vehicle so this is uh, one of the key factor now uh, the electric vehicle is more uh, focusing on however this braking is a scenario wherein for a pure electric vehicle the motor can act as a generator during the braking and the coasting conditions and those electric uh, thermal uh, energy can be converted to an electrical energy through the generator motion of the motor and that can be stored in the batteries now so here is the major list of electric vehicle components that needs to power the electric vehicle uh, wherein uh, for the conventional vehicles so uh, these components are not mandatory let us go through one by one of all these components here is the battery pack as a uh, which is the uh, energy storage device for an electric vehicle which stores the electrical energy as a, in a chemical form and as and when required this storage of the energy is being used or being pumped to the electric machine to generate the torque and the speed so electric machine is the one which produces a mechanical energy uh, from an input of electrical energy let's go in detail about the electric machine from the battery pack normally uh, the ba batteries the current is being stored as a dc current so dc current is being stored in the batteries and in recent uh, times the electric machines the advantage of going for electric machines of it means like ac electric machines are like uh, in the faster phase so uh, electric machines are of different types which is uh, AC induction machines, AC IPM machines. So what, what is the input for this electric machine is the three-phase AC current. So the, the, the current that's being stored in the battery is the DC current, and there is a device which needs to convert this DC to the AC uh, is the inverter. So the inverter does that, that part. So what the inverter does is so the stored DC currents from the battery pack is being inverted to a ac current and that is the input for the electric machine to produce the speed and the torque from the speed torque that's being produced from the electric machine which is being transferred to the transmission and the transmission delivers drives the wheels this is the two wheels this is the electric machine this is the battery pack and the inverter which i have explained now going back to the char charger and dc dc 
charger is a device so what charger does here so from a three phase ac means what we are using battery pack has to be charged so from the three phase ac the charger converts this charger one end of the charger connects to our three phase ac means which is from the home where we want to charge the batteries so one side of the charger is a three phase which is connected to our home and another one another end is connected to the batteries wherein this uh, three phase ac current is being converted to the dc and that is being used for the battery packs to charge so this charger is a device is used to charge the battery packs during the idle condition like whenever as and when the battery pack needs to be charged now there is one more component called dc dc so dc dc is what so now the dc dc is something like the batteries are like scaled up like 48 volts the batteries can be used at a different voltage levels and as all we know the our uh, the electrical uh, the low voltage 12 volt is being used for all the accessories that's being used in the vehicle accessories like the wiper system the headlights and the uh, tail lamps and the audio player so all these accessories are uh, needs and 12 volt batteries 12 volt batteries and the supply from the 12 volt batteries since for a conventional vehicle this battery is being charged as and when the engine is on so the engine produces the power through the generator means the alternator which converts that power to the electrical energy and that electrical energy is being transferred to this battery since there is no engine as such in electric vehicle so the battery which is having a different configuration of 48 old 360 volts which the high voltage has to be converted to a low voltage and this dc to dc does that job and it charges this battery and and hence from this battery all the accessories are being powered on